So here's the situation. You're a beginner and you're looking to get into the sport of backpacking. And the number one question that comes up is what backpack should I get? I too had to ask myself this question two years ago. It's not an easy question to answer and it's not an obvious question to answer because there are a lot of routes that you can go. Odds are you don't want to just jump in. Okay, you don't want to just jump in a sport that you've probably never even tried and drop the big bucks on a backpack. So there's two routes you can go. You can either look into the budget backpack brands and purchase one of those or you can go search the used market. Okay? You can get high quality brands used for half the price of new maybe even less well for the sake of this video we're talking about the first option you are going to go buy a new backpack brand new and let's say your budget is one hundred dollars or less either way new or used your budget is a hundred dollars or less what you're looking at now is that high sierra appalachian 75 liter and the argument could be made that this is the answer. This is the pack you should buy. That's the argument. At this point, I'm going to jump into the review. First, I'm going to show you, just give you a rundown of the features of the backpack. And then, immediately following, I'm going to give my opinion of the pack, how it stands up to others in this price range, or even cheaper, less expensive packs. All right, so just starting out going over the features. First, just let me say that the entire pack has been stuffed with pillows and jackets, socks and whatnot. That's just for representation purposes to let you see what a fully packed Appalachian looks like. Okay? So, starting out. Down here, we've got a separated, zippable sleeping bag compartment. And this is very standard procedure among backpacks, okay? We move up, we've got this map pocket. And this is just a thin, flat pocket that you can put maps in, obviously, but also, anything that you need very quick access, you can put here. I put silverware here, knives, whatever. This is an easy access, front access zipper, so... We just unzip this. We have front access, suitcase style access to the pack. And this is, like I said, that's a pillow. Yeah. But this comes in handy, I mean, all of the time. All the time. This is constantly coming in handy. I can leave my jackets up top, lay this thing flat like this, unzip that, and reach down and get straight to the food item that I need with leaving the jackets up top so on the side here we've basically got what is molly rings for strapping whatever you want to the side of the pack or you know you put a carabiner through there and strap something to that carabiner over here is a compression strap of sorts you can also slide an item such as a tent up in there and compress it to the pack because there's one top and bottom so slide your tent through there straight through compress both down right here is a generous side pocket there's one of these on both sides and I'd estimate these at about a liter each maybe a liter and a half so they're generous and they come handy so up here towards the top of the pack or the brain area you can see these tie down points which are kind of nifty there's four of them across the top one on each side so up here at the top we're just going to unbuckle the brain as it's called so we can peel back the top of the pack like layers of an onion the first is the brain itself then this which is a sort of a cinch strap can be used just as a basic compression strap to try to keep the contents of the pack tight or as a 
strap to hold something to the pack itself. For example, a sleeping pad or a tent. Um, I personally used this to hold a sleeping pad. I ran two sleeping pads on the last trip. I'll roll in the picture of that. There you can see it. And what I did was I just used this to hold the blue one in place and then down here it comes with these two straps buckles buckle straps to hold whatever you'd like in place at the bottom so here it is with the sleeping pad in place and fully strapped down it fits nice and you can see there's plenty of excess if you wanted to go much bigger you could so if we take the buckle off we'll find this inner tube of sorts with a cinch tie and then there's your main compartment but outside of this inner cinch is this outer cinch and this is nice for a couple of reasons one just to push the inner cinch down into and then cinch the outer cinch around it or if your pack is below full capacity you can just leave the inner cinch cinched as you take off your jacket layers put them here and cinch the outer cinch around it and then go over with your buckle let's just dive deeper into the inside of this pack first back here is a water bladder pouch and you can run your water bladder tube out either of either side that hole there or that hole there and bring it around the back and you can see the H2O marking these two gray buckled things you see here are are the stays so there's what one of them looks like right there they are removable if you would like to say remove them and fold the pack up pack the pack if you will so something that is definitely a concern for a lot of people and, th and this is fine they want to have a isolated sleeping bag compartment that they can just unzip and have quick and easy access to their sleeping bag this particular sleeping bag compartment is on the small side as far as sleeping bag compartments go but it will fit this zero degree mummy synthetic sleeping bag with little issue so here's the sleeping bag out now of the pack here's the compartment and this is something that's a little bit unique this is the divider between the main compartment and the sleeping bag compartment is zippable uh, you can also run simultaneously something through the bottom portion of these cinch straps and the top if you really want also there's one of these small hooks on each side that can be used for your strapping pleasures so here's the inner side starting from the bottom we've got the waist belt sporting adequate padding with an extra wide belt that wide belt creates so much surface area that there's not going to be the ability to slip and slide around here is a standard chest belt buckled here's what they're calling the ergo fit adjustment system basically this on the belt and then you slide it through the ring to get your shoulders closer to your hips this is to adjust based on the length of your torso also a stretchy mesh water bottle pocket on either side they're just big enough to fit a Nalgene bottle no bigger, I'm not going to fit anything bigger or wider back up here at the brain we find two pockets one large and cavernous and then one small that is lined with a soft felt material so to me this is like a sunglasses pouch maybe an electronic 
device of yours. So now that we have basically gone over the nitty gritty details, we can go over what is arguably the most important details, the broader picture. And that is weight, price, durability, and uniqueness. Okay, so let's just start with weight. This thing weighs in at 4.6 pounds. So, not exactly a lightweight, but also, this is important, also it's not a heavyweight. Okay, the price as of today, January 18th, 2016, this thing is going to run you $103.28 on Amazon.com. I have taken this backpack on five backpacking adventures over the last two years and numerous other expeditions, hunting expeditions and fishing expeditions. And I have to say the durability is absolutely outstanding. I, the buckles is always an area of concern. I haven't had any buckle failures. The zippers. You're going to read reviews on Amazon that are going to say, and I quote, sticky zippers. Okay? And that's true. For the most part, there are some sticky zippers on the pack. Like this one. The sleeping bag compartment zipper. A lot of times it's a little bit sticky, and this is my thought on that, okay? What they've done is provided us with their own house brand, more than likely, of zipper. And a lot of these zippers are just very robust, if you will. Look at the pure width of this. This is just a map <laughs> It's very wide, and to me, this was their answer to how to make it more durable for less money. They used probably less expensive materials, but they, by increasing the width, they were able to get to that durability level they needed to get to. And when you increase the width like they've done, you end up with stickier zippers sometimes. They're just, they're probably just as strong, just as durable as a thinner YKK, but you're going to run into stickiness. Look at the width on that zipper. Looks like a die cast zipper. Very wide, about a half inch, maybe three eighths of an inch wide. And they're tough. They're tough zippers. They're just a little bit sticky at times. So. If you can take the extra time to pinch the zippers together and pull the zipper through, say you're inserting your sleeping bag, you'll be okay. Another theory, and it's this ripstop nylon that they're using. It's very thick. I've seen Kelties, I've seen Ospreys, I've seen Gregory's. This is very thick nylon, and to me this is because of cost. They had to save cost, so they just went with the less expensive, thicker, heavier nylon. This is, it just, it makes the pack heavier in the end. And to many this will be a con, but to some they'll say, well, I'll take the extra weight if you give me the durability. And it's there. Uh, sticking with durability, we look down at the bottom of the pack, which we all know is going to be sat on the ground repeatedly. So what they've done here at the bottom is put almost a... I'm guessing it's nylon, but it's almost plastic in feel. But this is basically like a puncture proof material that, you know, is not going to wear out. It's going to take a long time to wear that out. So, my overall opinion of durability is outstanding. I think it's outstanding. I really do. And that will bring us to uniqueness. By buying this pack, what are you going to get that a cheaper competitor doesn't offer? Or, in some cases, even a more expensive competitor. I think that what they've done as a budget brand has said, let's, we can't compete with the big boys. So let's just throw every feature we can think of into the pack. Just, the thing's loaded with features. And, and that's a positive. That's a good thing. We've got tie points 
out the wazoo. Okay, and we've got just front accessibility, side pockets, brain pockets, sleeping bag compartment. Down here we've got a, a unique feature, and this is a designated rainfly pouch to holster the included rainfly. And I actually used this on our last trip for about a day and a half straight. We endured a winter rainstorm and snow and sleet, and it held up fantastically. This is something that the, the big box brands are not going to include. They're going to sell it separate for about 50 bucks is the average that I've found. So that's just nice. It's just a nice, unique feature. So that's going to bring us to competitive options. And in my opinion, there's like three ways to go. You can go up in price, you can go down in price, or you can search the used market. Okay? Since in the beginning of the video we said we're going to limit this to new. We're just going to talk about competitive options that are new. With that being said, you can get steals of deals on high impacts. Right at a hundred bucks. Uh, if you search the used market. But that's up to you. If you're a beginner or inexperienced Maybe you just want a backpacking style backpack. I don't know. These are going to be your options. You can go this route, which clearly I'm in a way pitching that to you. Or you can go more expensive. And this is going to open up a few more doors. This is going to get you into other brands such as Kelty. I mean, look at the Kelty Coyote 80. 80 liter pack. You know, I've got a friend, Justin. He's part of Bucks Bass and Backpacks, and he, he, he would leave a good review of that pack. And from what I've seen from Kelty, just the durability is off the charts. Kelty themselves would probably be considered a budget brand. If you're gonna go at this price range or cheaper, do an Amazon search. The first thing you're going to see is the Teton Sports Scout 3400. Never used it, never known anybody that's used it, so I can't leave a review of it. But it's an option, especially coming in at 61 bucks. Are you kidding me? $61 can get you into the sport, okay? Let's just not stop there because if we're talking about that $100 price range, <laughs> look at this pack's older brother. The Long Trail 90, Big D, who was who is a part of the channel, he used to sport it. Now his father Garrett sports it. It's the same pack, essentially it's the exact same pack up to 90 liters. For the same price. <laughs> Personally, I think 75, 70 liters, that range is the sweet spot. I just think it's right there, it's just about perfect. In my honest opinion, I think it's just right there a happy medium. But if if you think you want the extra 15 liters, you can get it for the same price. You can get the same pack, 15 liters more. Long Trail 90. So just as some closing statements. If you were to ask me if I could do it over again, if I could go back in time and purchase a backpack for the first time again would I go this route again? I'd say yes and there's nothing against the used market if I was going to go another route I'd go used market probably but how it served me the features the durability I would say yes so with that I would say my rating is good clearly my rating is good I'd say about four and a half out of five because of what you're getting dollar for dollar so just to conclude if you have any questions at all please comment those questions and I'll try my fastest to answer them also please just 
feel free to like the video that will help spread the awareness your likes help the video subscribe if you will just subscribe we have tons of great information in the channel also entertaining backpacking videos you can see this pack in almost every one of our backpacking videos as well as other great budget options we are a budget oriented group for the most part with that I'm gonna leave you good luck